Hello Indie Game Fan, it's an interesting week of releases since God of War Ragnarok comes out this week, which means that some developers will try to avoid releasing their game, but there will always be indie games beginning with Lunastis, a 3D platformer that has the PS1 or Sega Saturn inspired visuals looking lighthearted and fun, although releasing on the same week as Sonic Frontiers could prove disastrous. I've had my eye on Nadia, a grimdark deck builder for quite a while, since I believe this launched to a poor reception and got taken down, where the developer then released and have been actively working on their prologue demo, releasing the early access version this week. The art is a standout feature, as is the grimdark theme, we are descending into the underworld slaying demons, so hopefully the time in between launches has served its purpose. The very cozy puzzle game A Little to the Left also comes out this week, where you are organising and tidying up household items with a wonderful hand-drawn look. It might be described as the OCD puzzle game, since you have to sort and arrange things according to shape, size, colour and so on, with multiple solutions to each puzzle as well, and looks like a fairly pleasant experience. If you love city builders, Land of the Vikings might be of interest, a Norse themed entry, where I'm curious to see how this compares to Frozen Heim. You must learn how to live up the land. How to build something from nothing and expand your village for the growing population. We will grant you wisdom from Yggdrasil, the victory of knowledge. But your fellow settlers are your greatest asset. This land has dangers to throw at you, challenges to withstand. Do you have what it takes to survive? I'm not usually one for horror games, but Anglerfish certainly got my attention, being a horror adventure game that only saves when you die and where something in the game changes every time you do. As such, it does have the potential for more interesting narrative and storytelling, where developer Professional Villains also made the ER Patient Typhon which people seem to like. It was the thing that made video games a worldwide phenomenon, that changed the world, literally changed the world. Bigger games begin with Atari 50, an interactive walk through the history of one of gaming's most iconic companies, where it's being made by Digital Eclipse, so it should be good, even if the games might not age that well. It's the most fun I've ever had, making a game. <laughs> 
adventure really broke the mold for what the 2600 was capable of. In the beginning, there was only Atari, and the children looked upon it and saw that it was good. I would literally spend the entire weekend playing Star Raiders. Atari created the video game industry, and everybody that's come since then is building on what Atari created. We also have the Steam release of Munchkin Digital, the digital translation of a popular card game where frankly, I'm surprised that it has took that long for them to do this, but it looks fairly faithful to its inspiration. Alright, this game is definitely not indie, so don't go posting in the comments down below, but Tactics Ogre Reborn is the long-anticipated remaster of the SRPG classic, bringing it to PC, and is up there with Final Fantasy Tactics as the best in the genre. While we walk the earth, there will ever be conflict. A man will kill another over a husk of bread if not restrained. This conflict is larger than us now. I only want to see an end of death. Kill me if you wish. You can never kill our spirit, nor our desire for justice. Step forward and meet your fate. Don't be too gladly. Let our steel sink. Still I wait to hear how you would deliver they us. They ask for a stern hand to rule them. What good are kinsmen who won't lift arms for our cause? They're as good as dead. Too many died today. The future of our people depends on it. There is blood on my hands. How long till it lies on my heart? Smaller games, well, not that small, begins with Among Us VR, the VR adaptation of the popular social deduction game which shifts it into first person, so who knows, this might just be the killer app that gets people to buy headsets. We also have the release of Chess Survivors, one that, while kind of inspired by Vampire Survivors, is a turn-based roguelike where swarms of enemy pieces move in to attack you, being a clever twist on the genre.
interesting looking first person title is Common Hood, set in some sort of post apocalypse where you take over an abandoned factory and shape it to suit your purposes, with online co-op support and NPC settlers to manage, but I don't believe there's combat in this and it looks kind of chill. Like Tactics title of interest is Godless, one where you're the last surviving deity and have to give humanity a taste of your wrath, looking kind of simple visually but might have interesting strategy. Inverse City is a pixel art puzzle platformer from a Japanese developer where inverting gravity is the main hook and while it has been done before, the handstand element in this is different and will be for puzzle game fans. Mess Quest is essentially Viscera cleanup detail. In all but name, we are cleaning up the aftermath of something gone horribly wrong, where the environmental storytelling from the gross bits left behind is the fun part, and we'll also stretch that OCD part of your brain. The developer of Putrid Shot Ultra did reach out, where I think that this looked like a pretty neat arena-based action look light, reminding me of the grades like Super Creed Box so it gets a mention. The developer of Titan Station also did reach out, having described this as a Firewatch-like walking sim but set on board a space station, looking to have the same kind of mystery and intrigue.
detected. Let's kick off the top 5 with Xeno Command, a sci-fi RTS that sure looks to be inspired by StarCraft and comes to us from the developer of the action roguelite brawler Otherworld Legends, which I just covered in my previous video. It looks kind of neat and I could use an RTS, but do note that it's a port from a mobile game, but it appears that the microtransactions have been stripped out, so hopefully the core game is balanced and fun enough. On paper, perhaps the most anticipated game of the week is Soulstone Survivors, yet another Vampire Survivors style Bullet Heaven roguelite, but one that has previewed extremely well in demos, which has led to their Steam wishlist number absolutely exploding. Like the developer of Vampire Survivors, this developer has managed to distill down the essence of what makes games feel good to play, with powerful abilities, almost broken builds, constant progression, but with a matching sense of challenge from the enemies, making this one to watch. In the pursuit of immortality, I evoked a ritual of ascension. However, the Church of Zolar lay in wait. Their meddling trapped me in infernal torment. Years later, and more powerful than ever, I have returned. The Unliving was also delayed from Halloween to this week, where it's a roguelite action strategy title where you play as a necromancer, raising an army of the undead in search of revenge. I like the pixel art here, and the gameplay does remind me of Sea Salt. Having impressive pixel art as well, the delay was to add a new feature which the developers wanted to have for launch, so fingers crossed it's good, but they do have early access to work through issues if any. To lay waste to their treachery. But even if I fall, death will not stop. I dearly love developer Zeboid Games since they are carrying on the torch of the indie JRPG with their latest being This Way Madness Lies, a magical girl RPG framed as a Shakespearean play looking to be quite the curiosity. It does however retain their signature elements from party and combo based turn based action, wonderful pixel art and great writing. They're also aiming to make more bite-sized JRPGs, so 4 to 5 hours instead of 50 hour titles that you will never find the time to complete, so here's wishing them all the best for launch. Another long in development title makes it to launch with Fabula Once Upon a Space Time, a roguelite title where you're piloting spaceships modeled after medieval knights with interesting weapons and combat as a result. But I'm curious about the overall structure and progression in this, where you can see more of my favorites in this video. 